In this video, we're going to take a look at polydoku division. Uh, what it helps you do is it helps you to find the complex roots of an equation or a polynomial where it has higher than degree 2. If it was just degree 2, if the highest power in the equation was x squared, then we could put that into the quadratic formula and we'd be done. And we could get that from the quadratic formula on our calculators or using it by hand. We'd know the other two roots. So a situation that we're talking about is when we're given an equation that looks like this. So we have this equation that's written as y equals x cubed. Now this is a higher than a second power. It's a third power equation. We need to knock that down a power so that we can use the quadratic formula and, and solve it from there. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to come up with the roots for this. Now if I'm going to come up with the roots because it's a third power equation, there has to be three roots. Count them. One, two, three. Third power equation is the highest power. To see them, though, it oftentimes helps to make a graph of it or to see the graph. So if you type this equation in your calculator, like I'm showing here, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x minus 75, and then the second equation is y equals 0, I can do the calculation or second calc and actually get the point of intersection to figure it out. Or I can just push graph, and the graph comes up. It's this nice looking cubic graph which looks something like this. And I can clearly see that it hits at 3. If you don't really clearly see that it hits at 3, you can go second table, and you can see at 3, it has 0 across from it, so I know one of the roots is 3. If one of the roots is 3, that gives me the factor of x minus 3. So I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to divide it by x minus 3. And I get that because I know the one real root. I've now got one root. I need two more roots. This is about polydoku, so let me show you how to do that. I need to take this big long equation and divide it by this root. So the way you do that is, you write down the root, and that's the side of your generic rectangle, and then you put a double line where you put what it's equal to. We're going to have this equation, and you start it over here by the beginning of your double line. So x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x minus 75. And then in here we need to make a rectangle split here because that's where the term split, and then two boxes, two lines to make extra boxes for a quadratic. Then the last thing you do is you take your first number and you put it up here in your x cubed box, just like that. Now here is the setup. Everything that I'm putting in yellow right here is the first move. You put what you're dividing, what you're um, dividing it into. This is getting divided into this, and then this is your original number that you have in the first corner. Those are the three areas that you fill in first. As soon as you fill those in, then you're just looking at trying to figure out what the remaining boxes would be. And so you just go back up here and you find, okay, well if this is x cubed, this has to be x squared because x squared times x makes this box then if that's x squared, then this is negative 3x squared. Now the beauty of this is that these diagonal boxes, so this one that's in orange plus this one that's in orange, makes this orange term right there. And these diagonal boxes here, these two green boxes add together, they're going to be common terms to make this. And then this last box is the minus 75. We better get negative 75 down here because that's our remaining term. So diagonally speaking, they line up with the entry that's there. So x squared is up top. If I know I've got negative 3x squared, well, I've got plus 3, I've got a positive 3x squared. This has to be 6x squared because 6 minus 3 makes 3. These have to make this term. If that's 6x squared, this had to be 6x because there's an x over there. Next, if that's 6x, I know this is minus 18x. Well, this is positive 7. This had to be positive 25x. x times 25 is 25. So 25 times x makes that. Put the plus there. Negative 3 times 25 is negative 75, which is this number here. So these two add up to this, and this is the remaining number. This is what I was looking for. That's the other factor. So if I took x minus 3 and I took it times x squared plus 6x plus 25, it would make this original problem, which I had right here to begin with. This is the quadratic piece. Now this I can just throw right into the quadratic formula. So I take this, put it into the quadratic formula, and I can do that on my calculator. I can go program quad form and type in the numbers 1, 6, and 25. And when I do that, I get the other two roots, which are negative 3 plus 4i and negative 3 minus i. The key to doing this, to find these exact roots, is to set up the yellow stuff. You put the stuff on the side, put the, the, what you're dividing it into on the bottom, put the first term in this box, and then go about filling all the rest of them in. And then you know your top answer is your x squared, which you put into your quadratic formula to find your other two roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up two other problems here. 
have you try these, and then you can also then unpause the video and check your work. So here is one, do x cubed minus 28x minus 80, or 48, and then divide into that x plus 4. And I, I know that that's one of the roots. It has a root at negative 4. Uh, and then a third example would be to try this one here, x cubed minus x squared minus 3x minus 9. Uh, and that one has a root at 3, so you can divide that by x minus 3. It has a root at 3. So the roots, one of them is going to be at 3. We need to find the other two. So after you've written those two down, which are examples 2 and 3, you can pause the video and see if you can come up with the three solutions for each. Okay, welcome back. Let me just go through these real quick. Just to finalize everything, here is the original setup. That comes from the x cubed term here. Then this had to be x squared. This would be 4x squared. Well, it says 0x squared. Huh, that's interesting. There was no x squared term in here. So you need a placeholder, a 0x squared. So if that's the case, then you need to make room for it. So I've done that down here. So this must have been minus 4x squared. That's the only way I make 0. So this is minus 4x. And then this would be negative 16x, which then leaves negative 12x. So this is minus 12 up here. And then this makes uh, negative 48 because of negative, so it all works. As long as we get this last number to work, we know we have it. It's x squared minus 4x minus 12. So I can, again, I can run my quadratic formula using the numbers 1, negative 4, and negative 12. And my two other roots are 6 and 2. Well, look at that. They're actually not imaginary roots. All three roots were whole numbers, 6 and negative 2. This is one root at negative 4. The other two were 6 and negative 2. So if I graphed this, this thing would actually do this. Hit it negative 4, negative 2, and 6. I could probably just see that from my graph paper. But I do get the answers from using Polydoku. The last Polydoku question is this one here, where it starts out with x cubed minus x squared minus 3x minus 9. You start out your setup by putting your x minus 3 term on the side, your answer on the bottom, put your first term there. Then this had to be x squared. Then this would make minus 3x squared, which would make 2x squared. So this would have to have been a 2x and that would make minus 6x. Um, when I multiply those, then this would have to be 3x, so then plus 3 would be here. Gives me minus 9, everything works. Put 1, 2, and 3 in your calculator. So go 1, 2, and 3 in your calculator. And now I've got negative 1 plus 1.4. Oh, a nasty decimal. If you get a nasty decimal, what I would like to see you do is type that decimal in and then square it so that you can figure out if it was a perfect square number. So if I take that and square it, if it turns out to be a nice number, which it does turn out to be basically 2, then that's telling me it's negative 1 plus i times the square root of 2 and negative 1 minus i times the square root of 2. So those would be the other two roots. This gives me that 1.414 number, and I just squared it back to get it back in the square root. So the process, though, is polydoku to give us an x squared equation that we can then put into the quadratic formula and then I can find the other two roots using the quadratic formula. So hopefully that takes you through Polydoku. Good luck.